And you can speak in French if you wish. Ok. Alors, euh, je vous mets, enfin, il y aura l'exposition aussi, mais peut-être que la présidente peut vous y conduire pour, pour aller la voir. Du coup. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Merci, c'était très, très Merci bien. à vous, messieurs, dames. Merci Bonne fin d'après-midi. Merci. Merci. Merci à vous. Donc, it's, uh, it's good. Yes. Donc, on part en fait d'un fuseau avec une canette qui est externe et avec un passe ici. Le but étant de faire en sorte que le fuseau ait la file qui soit incorporée à l'intérieur. C'est pour cela que pour l'instant, nous ne pouvons pas rentrer parce que nous avons une petite tige qui bloque ici. Donc, on relève. Tant que la tige est relevée, vous pouvez du coup dévider. Dès l'instant où la tige retombe, elle retombe dans les dents et à partir de là, ça bloque le fil. Le geste consiste à faire en sorte que le fil se dévide à nouveau. C'est pour ça qu'on va chercher dans les œillets. On relève le bardin qui a un œillet, on passe à travers les deux d'un seul coup. Ensuite, on bloque le fil. On va chercher à l'intérieur du fuseau ce qu'on appelle un poids pour mettre une tension. Parce que pour faire une tresse, il faut un entrelac dessus, dessous des fils. Mais il faut également que ceci soit tendu. Et c'est pour ça que le fil va passer à travers l'œillet ici. On replace donc du coup le poids à l'intérieur. Pour l'instant, le poids dépasse en bas. On bascule. Le poids est tombé, l'œillet est visible ici, on bloque, on passe à travers l'œillet du poids. Après cette étape-là, il y a bien une tension sur le fil, nous sommes sur la bonne voie. Il ne reste plus qu'à aller chercher à nouveau ce fil dans le bardin, une deuxième fois, et à le faire jaillir par la cheminée. Et là, votre fil est monté. Qui fait que du coup, en tirant, vous faites remonter le poids, le poids vient taper le bardin, le bardin dévie le fil. I'm in seeming today and I thought I would address how to go around a toe. I've seen some questions recently about going around a toe and having a problem with the welt being so tight and I thought I would demonstrate how to solve that problem. A lot of times when people are in seeming they'll pull this welt tightly around the toe as they go around. And then, when they're finished, they can't bring the welt up flat like it's supposed to be. See how the welt is sticking out flat here? Because I'm going to put the sole on and the welt will just easily glue to the sole there because it's standing out just like it's supposed to be. And that's actually exactly what you need to do when you're inseaming to solve that problem. Hold the welt flat as you go around the toe. So here's this technique in action. If I pull the welt tightly and try to poke my awl through, then it's coming through right here. But if I push the welt out flat and poke my awl through, it comes out about a millimeter and a half farther down the welt than it would have originally. So I just worked a little extra into that welt.
and then when I pull the thread down tightly, it's going to compress that welt. When I pull the thread down tightly, it's going to compress that little bubble flat. And it'll, you'll never even know it's there other than the fact that your welt can stand out flat and it's not gripping tightly around the toe. In the demonstration as I was inseaming, I was using pre-made welt. This is welt that's made in a factory. It's already cut, it has the stitch groove, and it's also slashed around the edges so that it will spread out as it goes around a toe. I prefer to use pre-made welt because I hate making welt. And if you're ever in here when I have to make welt, you should hear me whine and scream. It's like having a toddler in the shop. I do know how to make it, I just don't like to. However, if you do have to make your own welt, or if you get hold of some welt that's not pre-slashed, there is a correct way to cut those reliefs. This is not the correct way. That is the wrong way. Don't cut notches in the edge, because then if you have to force it open as you're going around a toe, those slits will just continue to tear. That's not the way to do it. What you want to do instead is cut slits at an angle like this. So when I say at an angle, I'm pretty much perpendicular with the edge, but I'm angling into the welt. I'm not cutting straight in like this, and I'm not going all the way through. I'm just cutting little slices into the welt at an angle and going about two-thirds of the way into the thickness of the welt. This will enhance the welt's ability to stretch and flex as it goes around the toe, but if you do it properly, it won't tear and split open like this sort of cut can and will do. These are the shoes I'm making for my dad. It's just a really simple Oxford. I don't do broguing very often, so that's why I decided this time I'd incorporate some. And at the same time, I'm making a pair of Oxfords for my mom. I already have her uppers made. So they'll have cute shoes. College is really fun, but it's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. So I'm making my dad a pair of shoes, and he has agreed that he will pay my rent in return, which is really helpful. I need to get better at talking on camera anyway. That's right, you do, because you will have lots of interviews in your life. Probably. And that, in case you've ever wondered, is what a piece of dry welt leather sounds like when you put it in water. 